Wow, Bitcoin is on an absolute tear. It has skyrocketed to $32,600 in the last few hours, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So what's next? What's in store for Bitcoin? Is it going to be good news, bad news, or somewhere in between? We're going to dig into it right now. Let's check it out. So, I, my, this crypto channel, Luminate Crypto, is going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Now, to help us out and to help yourself out, you don't want to miss a single episode. Our content can be very timely. You don't want to miss an episode, so smash the like button, subscribe, hit the bell button, and click on all. So, like, subscribe, bell button, and all. Like, subscribe, bell button, and all. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is is just my opinion. It is not financial advice. I'm going to tell you the sorts of things that I talk to my wife about, I talk to my mom about, I talk to my dad about. I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm going to give you the best information that I have and we'll see where things go. Now as always, cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. Uh, definitely read the rest of this paragraph here. This is good advice no matter what you're investing in. Now, you can see here by this candle right there that Bitcoin has made a significant jump compared to, you know, what we've seen over the last several days. This is looking at December 19th all the way to today, which, you know, as you know, we're into January 2nd. January 2nd, 2021, and it is currently 11.08 in the morning, Central Standard Time in the United States. Now, with Bitcoin making such a dramatic move, as we see here, I mean, that candle is quite significant in the last few hours. The real question is, is where is it going to go next? And so we're going to answer that question in this video. So the first thing that we want to understand is that when Bitcoin makes big moves up, actually it's true for any cryptocurrency. When you have a cryptocurrency that's moving as fast and as aggressively as Bitcoin is right now, there is a also a strong likelihood that it will reverse and drop just as fast. So we're going to be watching for that. And if it hits any of our stop losses, if it hits any of our uh, the numbers that the trading program has set out for us, we're going to exit. We're going to exit from our trades and we're going to take some profits. Um, but we don't know when that top is going to hit. Now the algorithm has been fine-tuned to give us the best possible advice that we can uh, in order to exit those trades. And if you're following us on eToro, you're going to be able, to, if you're one of our copy traders, you'll benefit from when that happens, when the algorithm gives us that kind of a notice. Now, we only run the algorithm once a day, but it does give me some stop loss numbers so that if we do have an event like we're having today, we can watch those numbers. If it crosses those thresholds, we can jump out uh, fairly quickly. So anyway, let's get into it. Now, I wanted to show you this chart here. Whoops, wrong slide. You can see here that in a matter of a couple of days, Bitcoin, and this was just back in September. I mean, we're only talking a few months ago in September. It actually dropped by 28%. I'm sorry, 25.89%. That's where I got the eight from. I was missing up the decimal points. So anyway, 25.89, basically 26%. It did that in a very, very rapid pace. I point this out because I had somebody who was copying me on eToro. They put in a stop loss of 5%. If you're going to put in a stop, if you're going to copy trade me and you put in a stop loss of 5%, don't waste your time. You're going to be losing money because all you're going to do is end up, I shouldn't say all you're going to do, but the likelihood or the possibility that all you're going to do is make eToro money because you're going to be buying trades and then getting out of trades. And every time you trade with eToro, they charge you what they call a spread. 
If you, if you want to look more up on that, you can look into eToro's fees. But basically, you're going to end up paying them money because 5% for a stop loss is not enough for any cryptocurrency. Um, I really think it's bad that eToro even puts the 5% number as something that people can select because people will choose it. And with cryptocurrency, it can, it can drop 5% very 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 quickly and so it ends up taking you out of trades that you should have stayed in longer you know with any kind of investment you have to give it patience and persistence you have to be patient and you have to be persistent because in order for you to make your money you got to wait for you got to give it time for it to grow and you have to be willing to stick with it persistence you have to stick with it even when sometimes it gets difficult. I've had times where we've lost 70% of our portfolio, but I knew enough about cryptocurrency that I knew that, that seeing a 70 or an 80% drop in a very short period of time is something that happens, but because it is also goes up uh, by, by double or triple your money, it's also well worth staying into. Because if you stuck with cryptocurrency this year. This year, the lowest price it saw was $3,800. And the highest price in 2020 was right at $30,000. So that's almost a 10x return. But there were times during 2020 where crypto dropped by 50, 60, 70%. And if you got out of those trades, man, you could have missed out. Um, you would have missed out on the large gains at the end of the year unless you found a good point to get back in and that's the tricky part that's why I use my algorithm because I'm not good at calling those points to get out and to get in but I trust the algorithm I found it to be extremely extremely fruitful now I wanted to show you this slide here because we have built a website I'd love for you to check out the website and we made it so that it's easier for you to be able to well, that didn't work. The other one didn't work. Let's try this. So we'll scroll up. This is what the website looks like. Uh, check it out. It's Lumen8, the number 8, crypto.com. Just like you see right here. So, come on. There we go. Lumen8crypto.com. Uh, I hope that you'll check out our website and let us know what you think. Something I wanted to bring up is, is what kind of gains so cryptocurrency bitcoin in particular is on a four-year cycle every four years it goes through a halving that having cuts the rewards or the new cryptocurrency that's created for the next four years by 50 percent and so let's go back to that chart so prior to this blue line here uh there was 50 cryptocurrencies, 50 Bitcoins created for each block. Uh, after that, it dropped to 25. And then here from this blue line to this blue line, it was 12.5. And then now starting at this blue line going on forward, it's down to six and a quarter. Um, and basically what that means is here on this blue line, it was cut in half the, the mining rewards and the amount of new Bitcoin created was cut in half. And then here it got cut in half again, and here it got cut in half again. And so as of this moment, there's about 900 Bitcoin that gets created on a daily basis. And 900 is not very many. What that's done is it increases the scarcity. And every time this happens, Bitcoin reacts to the increased scarcity. And so there's not many things that we have to compare this to. I mean, when you think about gold, uh, gold has these, these great big mining facilities where they run a team of people and they process through uh, tons, I mean, literally metric tons of dirt and they wash the dirt just to find a few ounces of gold. Well, imagine if, what if every four years, those gold mines only were able to produce 50%. I mean, it was just, boom, it, it produced 50% less. And so instead of it producing, say, 100 pounds of gold in a year, it only produced 50 pounds of gold in a year. And then four years later, it only produces 25 pounds of gold a year. 
what would happen to the price of gold? Gold would go up dramatically because it's in demand, but the supply was decreasing. There was fewer, there was less and less and less gold getting created. Now there's nothing in nature, there's nothing in that's natural that that happens with. Bitcoin is unique because it's being controlled by a computer program and that computer program was designed so that that get, gets cut in half. Now what we need to understand is how does that affect the price and you can see that here. So the first halving that Bitcoin had the price, and yes, that is accurate. It went up 25,000. Let me highlight this number. It went up 25,060%. That is a 250x return. So for every dollar, for every $1 you put in, it output $250. Your investment became worth $250. And let's look at what period of time that happened in. 579 days and so we're talking a little bit less than two years and people saw their investment grow 250 times that is spectacular now let's look at the second halving so in the second halving I picked a larger area a larger period of time because I was looking for the previous low and when we go with that previous low to the to the high up here so from this low here, all the way up to, all the way up, hang on, there we go, right there. All the way up to the high up here, we're still talking about a dramatic gain. We're looking at 12,652%. Think about that for a minute. 12,000% gain. Wow, now it did take 1,065 days which is, you know, a little over three years, right in the ballpark of three years. But for getting, for, for putting in $1 and getting out $125 for waiting three years, that's worth it. I'll tell you what, that's really worth it. So let's look at, look at our current situation. So our current situation, we did see a low, that low happened in this year. Um, and so the time frame is gonna be a little bit shorter. The low was about 3,800. And our current high is, uh, as of the time I, I took this screenshot, it was at 32,714. And so 32,714, man, I can't imagine that number. That's huge. That's dramatic. Um, anyway, in a 306-day period, so we're looking at less than one year, we've already seen a 758% return. So in the last, I mean, let's, let's just take it as 365 days. I know it wasn't, it was 300 days. But if we, if we just thought for a second that this was one year, not, what is that, nine months, 10 months, somewhere around 10 months out of the year, even 10 months, 10 months to get seven times your money. Where can, where can you put your money? and get seven times your money in just 10 months. Pretty spectacular if you ask me, but I think we're just beginning because if you look at that chart compared to the other bull runs, to the other halvings, you can see that they actually went on for quite a bit longer than the current one has had time to go on. You can see that after the halving, it went on for about 18 months and so 18 months hasn't even occurred. We're not even into the first 12 months since the previous halving. And because there's so much, when you think of a bell curve and you think of something going from, you know, 5% adoption to 70 or 80 or 90% adoption, there's a period of time right there in the middle where it grows the fastest. And that's what's happening with Bitcoin. Right now, there's about 5% of the world that's using Bitcoin, but now that PayPal has added Bitcoin, that's 300 million new customers. Now that Square is adding Bitcoin, that's about 70, 80 million new customers. Now that TradeStation has added Bitcoin, that's about 30 or 50 million customers. And when e -tor, I mean E-Trade and TD Ameritrade and all of these other uh, investment and brokerage firms 
as all of these other investment and brokerage firms are turning on the ability for people to buy Bitcoin on their platforms, that's just going to increase and increase and increase. I mean, we've got 300 million people through PayPal and through the stock markets and different stock exchanges, we have another 500 million. Plus we have the institutional and an industrial interest. We've seen in the last few months, we've seen over $15 billion being moved into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency from businesses like MicroStrategy, where they're taking their US dollars out of the bank and putting it into Bitcoin and their explanation, I listened to a two and a half hour podcast where the, where the president of MicroStrategy, which is one of the companies that's changing out their uh, US dollar treasury into cryptocurrency, he talked about how it's all about preserving wealth. It's all about preserving the value and what they can buy for that money. And you might be saying to yourself, yeah, but inflation's only 1%. Well, I thought, I thought uh, Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy had a really interesting way of talking about inflation. You know, you can look at what the government and how the government measures inflation, but they put all these different things into the basket that almost never change in price. It's almost as if they're trying to stack the deck so that they can come out and say, oh no, there's no inflation. What he said is you really need to measure inflation on an individual basis. If you live in New York and you want to buy a house in the Hamptons, the inflation on the price of that house in the Hamptons is, is astronomical. There was a three month period in 2020 where the prices of houses in the Hamptons went up 50%. That's hyperinflation. And his point was, you can't measure inflation by what's in the, in the basket of goods that the government uses to measure inflation. You need to measure inflation based off of what you think you're gonna buy in the future. And so if you're gonna buy a house in the Hamptons, you need to measure that inflation rate as better than 100% a year because that's the, that's the amount that those prices are going up. And if you don't measure it correctly, you may make a mistake in terms of your planning. And he said, as far as a company goes, we're looking to buy things that have hyperinflation today. And so for us to be able to save money to buy those things, we need to put our money in assets where we can keep up with the inflation on the items we want to purchase. So that's why he chose to take a large portion, I think it's like 50 or 75 percent, of their U.S. Treasury out of the U.S. bank and put it into cryptocurrency. Now there's a host of other companies that are doing the very same thing. They're moving their money and their capital out of U.S. dollars into cryptocurrency because they want to preserve that wealth and possibly even cause the wealth to grow. Now if Bitcoin does anything like it's done in the last 10 years, in the next 10 years, then they're going to see a significant increase. In fact, Michael Saylor was talking a little bit about how they're looking at taking out loans and based off of the income that their business produces, that those loans may, uh, they'll take the money that gets borrowed and buy Bitcoin with it. And they're thinking that they may be able to double, triple, or even do 10 times more income because of the rate of growth in cryptocurrency than the income they're actually getting out of their billion dollar business. Think about that for a second. The income from their billion dollar business could be overshadowed or multiplied because they're using loans, using leverage to buy Bitcoin. Wow. Uh, it really, you, you, you need to understand that wealthy people stay wealthy because they use very, very smart people to help them make decisions that allows them to multiply that wealth. And while you and I don't have the luxury of having that kind of advisory board giving us advice and direction, we can learn from the decisions that they make and if we, if we follow the pattern that they're setting before us, then we can also do the same. Now, I definitely 
do not recommend and I do not think it's a good idea to use any kind of leverage whether it's borrowing money or using leverage on one of the exchanges that give you 100x leverage in fact Michael Saylor strongly strongly advise people not to use leverage on an exchange because if the price drops too much you lose what you have by him borrowing money then that money uh, just because the price of Bitcoin drops doesn't mean that that Bitcoin gets sold and so he still has that regardless of the fluctuations in price of Bitcoin he'll still have that Bitcoin it doesn't get sold like it would if you used leveraged off of say Bitfinex or one of the other exchanges that'll give you leverage on that exchange and so um, I, I've just seen too many people that get wrecked and lose their entire investment because of, uh, of taking 10x, 50x, 100x leverage on different exchanges and so uh, personally I stay away from that that's my opinion and that's my um, it's not financial advice but it's my opinion anyway this page here is uh, our eToro page and if you want to copy our trades and copy the recommendations that come out of our trading program we run the trading program on a daily basis and then under certain times like what we're seeing right now we'll monitor that very closely and we may decide to, to make changes based on what's happening in the market at the moment. Right now, Bitcoin is going up so fast that we're just going to wait until we see it turn around. And if it turns around enough, if it starts dropping enough, we will sell. So, now the, the trading program we've written, it uses mind-numbing math. It runs through thousands of mathematical calculations for each buy and sell recommendation it makes and so it it does a really thorough job right now eToro has given us the ability to give fifty dollars to ten people ten people so this is going to go fast um, the ten people have not claimed their fifty dollars yet and so if you want to be one of those ten here's the steps that you need to take go to this link here eToro.tw 2SDIOMS click on that link and create a brand new eToro account once you have that account open fund your account with two hundred dollars or more and then once you have your account funded um, what you want to do is go to our web page on eToro our community page on eToro and copy our trades and by doing that eToro will give you a fifty dollar bonus within the next uh, thirty days or so We've seen them uh, actually coming in within a week or two, um, but they said on their website the last time I read it, it was about 30 days for you to get your 50 bucks. So, you know, be patient, give them a little bit of time and they will get to it. So how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? I'm, I'm interested in hearing from you. Whether you disagree or agree with what I've said, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave comments below. If you're on our website, then navigate to the YouTube page where you're watching the video and leave the comments on the YouTube page. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.